Okay, here's the here's the vacuum formula that I made. It's a pretty simple deal. Just a metal frame. These things pop up. A, a 12 and a quarter by 12 and a quarter piece goes in here. Just set it in. Lock it down. locked inside this frame you can see that now you stick this in the oven and you heat it up to well you heat it up until the plastic starts to droop this is uh, I believe it's 0.020 polystyrene and then this is just a simple deal it's uh, just a little vacuum form table I whipped up out of a piece of old countertop and you don't need to put as many holes in as I did a larger hole um, these are half inch apart they can be an inch apart with a bigger hole it's fine. And then in the bottom, you can see, if you can see that, um, is where I plug in the shop vac. So this is a CZ75 SPO1, that's what I'm going to mold today. Um, I don't block anything out on these, I just uh, mold the whole gun like it is. And you'll notice I got it locked and cocked there. Um, or cocked and locked, rather. Because uh, that's what I want to have, you know, so the safety is in the right position. Because this one has a safety net decocker. And then I've got the plastic in the oven. It's going to take a while. It's only up to 135 right now. but So you can see that when it starts, it's already starting to droop. When it, when it droops and it's really pliable, it's still hard right now. It'll droop and it'll just be floppy like a piece of cloth in there. And that's when it's ready to um, throw on the, on the vacuum, on the... Uh, vacuum former. Hotter the better. And then, so I need to plug the, hey you little dog, I need to plug the uh, chop back in and it's going to be ready to go here in a second. Okay, the plastic is all floppy. This only takes a few minutes, especially with the heating elements on, put it on broil. I'm not trying to get the temp, the, I don't the temperature necessarily. I don't like getting that in a hurry. Okay, it's all floppy now. And then we're going to go ahead and I've got the thing plugged in. I'm going to try and do this one handed. I'm going to turn this on first. Usually I don't. I put it on and then I vacuum form it down. But I'll just slap it on there with it already running something. I'm going to have one hand. I should probably plug this in first. Yeah, plug it in first. Sorry, I'm not making you seasick with it. Pulls off really fast. Still put a magnet in there because that makes it hard to get out of the mold. But, okay. You want to put the gown, make sure you crack the half way point on the gun. Okay. And yes, I do this in my kitchen because my oven downstairs isn't big enough for this. So it, it's already cooled off. It can be demolded. I'll trim it off, which I'll show you, and then uh, um, form another side. Okay, this was a bear to get out because I let it suck through the trigger guard. Should have blocked that off, and then uh, put a magazine in the in the in it so so that it doesn't get sucked into the handle. Just makes it really hard to um, to get it back off. I mean, see, I cracked it right there, which isn't a big deal, I can fix that. And actually I'll be cutting some of that off. So what I'm gonna do next, and I can't really do this on camera because I'm gonna be using my iPhone, it's gonna be tough to do. So I will uh, just draw a line around the center and then um, cut it with a razor knife or a cut off tool on a Dremel or whatever, but part it right down the middle, all the way around. And then once I have that done, I'll show you this next step. Okay, so there it is after you part it. and. Uh, and trim it off. It's parted right down the middle, or close to it. You know, it doesn't have to be perfect. The closer, the better. And this is what I use. I use one of those little saw deals on a 
on a uh, Dremel. It took me probably two minutes to cut this thing out. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this thing and just put it back on my gun, the same side that I molded the first time. It'll snap right on there. And then we'll go up there and mold, it, mold the other side. Okay, now we've got the uh, we've got the gun all parted, and I've snapped the mold that we did the first side back onto the gun, and I'm going to set it on here. And now we're going to do just the same thing. I'm going to heat up the the plastic, and the I put another piece into the form. And this stuff's cheap, so the waste is just nominal. I mean, that a whole four by eight sheet is I don't know, it's less than fifteen dollars. I think I paid eleven. Plus tax, I was probably around 12 bucks or so for a whole sheet of this stuff. And I've made um, at least a dozen. This will probably be about 12, 12 molten gun I've made uh, out of them. And then when I'm done with this, I'm going to go ahead and do this off camera, get this all done, and then um, I'll show you the plastic I used to pour in them. It's actually a pattern uh, material for making sand cast mold. It's really hard, full of sand. All right. All right. So I put the plastic. I heated it up. It's really fast, especially if you put it on broil. The stuff heats up really quick. So the other side is now on, and so I have that. You can see the parting line right here, where that other piece of plastic is right here. So what we're going to do is, you don't need to cut this other one off. You can just all you got to do is pop it out. You might have to because it's undercut here so much. But now these things too, when you pour plastic in them. If you can manage to save this mold, you'll be lucky. It's usually kind of a one-shot deal. You can make one gun out of them, and you're not breaking them, getting the plastic uh, part out of them. But you can see the definition this thing gets. I mean, you can, when you're on the inside, you can actually see serial numbers and everything. The cool thing about it is all these areas are already filleted. So all through here, all this stuff is filleted. So when you when you do your kydex over it, it, it doesn't have any of those sharp angles that it tries to shove down into. Even this, like the channels on the on the on the uh, rails and, and all this stuff, it just makes for a little bit smoother inside, but you still have all the detail that you can pick up. Plus, these things tend to actually come out just a little tiny bit bigger than a real gun. So, um, uh, I would my, my experience is that one layer of blue tape is all you need. Maybe a layer of silver tape. You have to mess with it. Each one's a little tiny bit different. Anyway, I'm going to trim this one off a little bit and get the gun out of there, and then we'll pour plastic. So here's the mold. Got the gun out of it. And you see I just snapped this back in there. It actually snaps back in too. Because where, where it's rolled over here, um, it actually kind of forms a little snap lock thing. However, these seams are not going to be tight enough to keep your material from coming out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a couple of things. First I'm going to go through and I'm going to run a hot glue gun. And I'm going to put glue all the way around the seam right here. And then I'm going to um, take silver duct ducting tape, you know, the metal um, HVAC tape, and I'm going to tape all this up. And then another thing you got to do is you got to make sure you got a place to pour in your um, your material. And you can fill up the handle or not. I always do for some reason. I don't know why, just so I have a whole gun, I guess. But you don't really need the handle on there. So if you want to save the material, you can just, you know, come up to here. So I'll pull this out. Inside of it. You can see the the detail. It picks up the checkering and the handle, all the serrations in there. It's not focusing very well. It's not the knife bone, so what do you expect? Um, I think. Let me see what shot it on. And if you look closer, you can actually see the CZ75 right here, and uh, all that stuff. Then you just snap this part back in there and uh, fill it full of resin. And the resin I use is called AdTech Plastic Systems. It's two part. Um, there's a part B and a part A, and you mix it together, and it's a um, it's a uh, filled um, with some kind of heavy material. I'm not sure. I think it's sand, just silicon. But um, well, I'll show you that in a minute. I'll put this thing back together and hot glue it and tape it. And then we'll pour some. Okay, guys. So here's the here's the mold. It's all done. Here's the back of it, taped up. 
sealed up, all that stuff. So when you pour these things, and well, so I, I don't have any material. I actually went down to mix up the plastic to, to pour this and realized that one of the two halves had, had gone bad because the lid wasn't on all the way and it was all chunky and crusty. So I can't use it. Um, so I'll have to get some more and pour one of these and I'll, I'll post what it looks like. Or I would imagine by the time I get around to doing that, somebody will have already done this and they can they can post theirs. But um, so the particular stuff that I use is is uh, um, Ad Tech, and it is it is especially special uh, especially designed for uh, making sand pattern uh, molds for when you do sand casting of steel or, or aluminum or whatever. And um, it, it's filled so it won't shrink, and that's that's really important to to use that type of material and even if you use a polyester or fiberglass resin you want to make sure you fill it so that you don't get a bunch of shrinkage because it'll mess up your dimensions and you're dead. Another thing I would recommend is you can take this part right here and just clamp it down to a board and then it's rigid so it doesn't flex around and it also will push on this side and keep it in better and um, it's important to fill it up about halfway fill it up to about here and then roll it around and get the air bubbles out of the trigger guard um, if you actually fill the trigger guard, block it out beforehand, it's, it fills out, the whole gun fills out better, which I would recommend doing. Um, and then uh, let it set up, pop it out, and you get yourself a, a pattern gun. And you can, there's some other things you can do. I've actually do another video on how to, how to mold this out, where this mold actually snaps together. And it's probably a, a, a better mold as far as being able to reuse it more than once. Um, I've got a few of these that I've managed to not break and pulling them out, but usually they break. When you, when you pull them out, you end up cracking the mold all up and breaking it. Anyway, if you've got any, uh, any questions, give me an email or uh, right here in the comments. All right, bye.